Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box covering the Steam Daily Deals for the 22nd of December 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you these deals and reminding you that they will run until 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is 5 p.m. EST or 10 p.m. GMT, 11 p.m. Central European Time tonight. So. Even once the next sale ticks over, you can, in fact, still buy for a limited time from this particular sale. And it's a good sale today, as far as I'm concerned. So let's get right to the game, shall we? I'd also like to thank Reddit and specifically LTX for providing a handy table with prices, which has made this significantly easier. So thank you very much to them. First game, Skydrift, 50% off. I recently did a WTF is of this game, and I highly enjoyed it. For half price, considering it wasn't particularly expensive to begin with, I would certainly say give it a shot. There is a demo available, so if you have any doubts, it might be worth doing. The online population has increased significantly. It didn't used to have one. Thankfully, it increased once we made the video of it, so you can actually get multiplayer games on the PC now. 50% off, that's 5 bucks, 5 euros, £3.50, or 5 Australian dollars. Watch the video, or indeed look at the demo, and it is a arcade sky racing game. It's got a lot of pace to it. I very much like the amount of variety there is in terms of the tracks, and the amount of modes available, and the number of planes that you have in order to unlock and customize. Gives me a bit of a Crimson Skies vibe, and I certainly enjoyed what I played of it, although it is a little tricky to control with the keyboard. Not impossible, just a bit difficult. Mass Effect and Mass Effect 2, both 75% off. That's five bucks. Three euros 74 for Mass Effect, but curiously five euros for Mass Effect 2. I'm not sure why that is. The original game is two pounds 50 and five Aussie dollars, but curiously the second game is five pounds and five Aussie dollars. So the UK guys get screwed a little bit on Mass Effect 2, although what I would say is that Mass Effect 2 is a good enough game for that price. I mean, there's no real doubt that the game is worth the cost of entry there. It's an absolutely exceptional title. Both of them are really good, honestly. They've both got some niggling problems with them that I don't necessarily like. Mass Effect, for instance, has some fairly bad inventory management, and the shooting is not quite as good, whereas Mass Effect 2 cuts out a lot of the stuff that I like from RPGs, i.e. fiddling around with equipment and stats and things like that in favor of better shooting and arguably a better storyline. What they've both got is excellent character development, some very enjoyable personalities, some excellent voice acting, and some amazing worlds. I mean, there's nothing particularly original about the world that they've created in Mass Effect. It's very much chopped and changed from various sci-fi worlds, but it is well put together. It's got a rich history behind it, and it's very atmospheric. It draws you in. It's immersive. So that's certainly something that you should consider. They also both have excellent music, something I'd like to point out there. Both games are worth having. I would play both if you haven't played either of them. That's something that you might want to just settle down with and do over the Christmas period. Play Mass Effect and then play Mass Effect 2. Import your character in from the first game in order to get some interesting little bits of dialogue here and there. I am certainly a fan of both of those games. Unfortunately, the DLC is not available on Steam. You have to get it through the Bioware network, the Cerberus network, which is something of a pain in the ass, and it's unfortunate because some of the DLC, especially for Mass Effect 2, is very good. Mass Effect 1 doesn't really matter. The only worthwhile DLC for that is Bring Down the Sky, which comes with the game anyway, so that's not something to really concern yourself with. Avadon, The Black Fortress, 75% off. This is by the veteran indie RPG makers Spiderweb. They've made a ton of really good stuff in the past. Now, if you're looking for a really old-school RPG, and I do absolutely mean old school then this is something to look at these are the guys that made exile do you remember exile i do i played exile when i was a kid those games were pretty damn amazing and spiderweb's pretty much been doing the same thing for a very very long time and they are actually very very good at what they do so if you're looking for something really old school if you're willing to get over the fact that the graphics are not particularly good and that the interface is a little bit clunky what you'll find is a really well written and challenging deep classic crpg bit like Baldur's Gate, a bit like Icewind Dale. Something to certainly have a look at as far as I'm concerned if you are interested in something a bit different. And by different, of course, I mean something that is rooted in old school design philosophies and game mechanics. So that will cost you $2.50, €1.74, £1.49 or $2.49. Definitely worth a look at. There is a demo available if you have any doubts. And if you can get over just how low-fi the game actually is, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Limbo, 75% off. That is $2.49, 2 euros 49, £1.74, 2 Aussie dollars 49. 
that's pretty much uh, yes, honestly. And if there's no real doubt about that. If you're interested in puzzle platformers of any sort with a uh, particularly unusual aesthetic, then I wouldn't hesitate to recommend Limbo. I did a WTFS video of this. You can click on the link in order to have a look at that. That game killed me a lot. And in fact, that game will have the entire environment after you. Most things in that game kill you one way or the other. It's definitely a very interesting title. It's not as pretentious as I would have thought it would have been either. That's the funny thing about it. I think that they pulled it off quite nicely. A Braid, for instance, is quite a pretentious game, but Limbo, not so much. It's just very immersive, very atmospheric, and very lonely as well. I would definitely recommend Limbo without a shadow of a doubt or a moment's hesitation. Torchlight, 75% off. How many times has this game been on sale? Well, this is a Diablo-style game by Runic, who comprise of many of the members from Flagship Studios and Blizzard North, the guys who actually made Diablo in the first place. And this will cost you uh, $3.74, €3.74, £3.24, or $3.74. So Euros and the UK guys are not exactly getting the best end of the deal. This game does go on sale very, very frequently, and of course the sequel will be out sooner rather than later. It's got a really active modding scene but it is only a single player game there's a few things you can say about it that are not so much in its favor like say it's somewhat repetitive which i would say diablo was as well and it's not got a particularly good storyline but what it does have is really satisfying combat a lot of great loot a lot of ways to acquire loot and a really awesomely realized universe that's something that i would put in its favor and once again there is a massive modding scene for this game so there's a lot of different mods available to uh, help the long longevity of it so for that price absolutely but chances are most of you already own this damn thing anyway i mean it's been on sale so many times silent hill homecoming 75 percent off that's ten dollars four euros 99 it's a good deal for the europeans four pounds 49 and seven aussie dollars 49 so for once the americans actually get screwed over on this but it's not a particularly good title. Honestly, the later Silent Hill games really haven't been. Shattered Memories has been probably the best one recently, but Homecoming, not so much. Not really a particularly awesome title as far as I'm concerned. The PC port also isn't very good, so unless you're really desperate for horror, then I would avoid don't get me wrong, like a Silent Hill game, it is very, very atmospheric, but it's nowhere near as good as the first three games, I'm afraid. It's just not on that level. It's a different developer. I'm not a fan. Blur, 75% off. Uh, this is such an upsetting title. Why? Because it's awesome. It didn't do very well commercially, and it pretty much sealed the fate of one of my favorite developers of all time, Bizarre Creations. This game is absolutely stellar. It's going to cost you $5, 5 euros, £3.74 or five Aussie dollars. This is actually one of our preferred LAN games. Whenever I go to a LAN, Blur is often broken out because it's a 20-player racing game with great LAN support. It is kind of like Mario Kart, only with real cars. A lot of people have also said it's like Wipeout, but in the past, Wipeout Zero. A lot of people have come to call it in a rather loving fashion, even though it has nothing to do with the series. It is the racing of real cars, but you also use futuristic power-ups in order to make it happen. It is incredibly enjoyable. I am a massive fan of Blur, and even for those of you with only a casual interest in racing games, Blur should be high up your priority list. It does have a good single-player mode as well, even if you're not interested in playing multiplayer. Great game, highly recommended. It's just a shame that the studio is now dead. That's a very saddening thing indeed. Divinity 2, 75% off, that's $10, 10 euros, £7.49 or 10 Aussie dollars. This game is quite complex, it's also very challenging, it is a big time sink for those who are big RPG fans. I mean, if you are a casual fan of RPGs, chances are you're not going to enjoy Divinity 2. It is a good game though, don't get me wrong, and this is Divinity 2 The Dragon Knight Saga, which is the much upgraded version. It's completely remastered. The original game was called Divinity 2 Ego Draconis, which was nowhere near as good. But this game, much, much better. It's got two campaigns in it. It's got a lot of depth to it. It's got a lot of exploration involved in it. And as I said, it's got very challenging combat, but it is clunky in places. It also has some fairly brain dead 
AI. Not everyone is going to enjoy this. It sort of caters towards the more hardcore end of the market in terms of RPGs. Personally, I'd recommend looking at Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 a bit more than that. If you want something really hardcore, look at Avedon. Of course, I hope that some of you have picked up The Witcher 2 and the original Witcher games. As far as I'm concerned, they are better games than this. But if you are looking for an RPG experience and you're pretty much burned through everything else, then Divinity 2 is certainly not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, it's got a few issues. Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising and Operation Flashpoint Red River. So Dragon Rising is $3, 2 euros 79, 2 pounds 39, or 3 Aussie dollars. It is pretty bad far as I'm concerned. It takes everything from the original Operation Flashpoint, throws it out the window, and turns it into a complete sodding mess. It is utterly unimaginative as far as I'm concerned. There is no plot to speak of. The gunplay is absolutely abysmal. It just feels bad in every respect. It's also a really terrible console port, so I would not touch Dragon Rising or indeed Red River with a 10-foot pole. Red River is even more expensive because it was a newer title. That's nine dollars, seven euros, five pounds, or nine Aussie dollars. Absolutely not a void as far as I'm concerned. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, 50% off. That's $25, 25 euros. So the Europeans really get screwed on this one. 15 pounds, not bad, or $45 on the Australian store. That's US dollars, by the way, but that's what the Australians are having to pay. That's why I'm calling them Aussie dollars. So that screws over the Australians completely there, and the Europeans get a bit of a kick in the teeth as well. In the UK, that's not a terrible price. Admittedly, it's more expensive than what it currently is on consoles, honestly, and as a result, I have a feeling that some people are just going to try and wait it out with this one. It is an absolutely fantastic game, especially if you happen to be a 40k fan. It's pretty brain dead, but as regards to third-person action games, it is a ton of fun. Now, a lot of people will claim that it's a repetitive title. Yes, most third-person shooters are in that respect. Not really a lot of exploration going on here. It's fairly linear. There aren't really all that many multiple paths that you can take. But as regards to a mixture of ranged and melee combat, it is one of the best third-person games I've ever seen. As regards to being a 40k licensed game, it's very, very good as well. It's very faithful to the universe, with a few exceptions. For instance, the Melter Gun really doesn't work in the way that it is described. Bolt Guns do feel good, although not as meaty as I would like. And let's be honest, using a LAS Cannon as a sniper rifle is not exactly what the LAS Cannon was designed to do. The LAS Cannon is actually an anti-armor weapon. You could use it as a sniper rifle, I suppose, but there are actual sniper rifles in the 40k universe. The problem is that space marines in power armor full power armor anyway don't use them for space marine scouts okay i'm getting a little bit nerdy it does have a multiplayer component it's fairly good but there are no dedicated servers so you're dealing with lag issues as well as the fact that you've got to mute everyone in the lobby every time you enter a game because the voiceover ip is on by default which is an absolute pain in the ass, I have to add. There is some DLC now. The Exterminatus pack adds some co-op for free. That's definitely worth having. And then there's a Chaos co-op pack with three extra maps as well, which is probably not really worth getting. But watch my video on this. I enjoyed the game an awful lot. I thought that it was absolutely fantastic. Though, of course, having an interest in the 40k franchise does increase your enjoyment of this game by a fairly significant margin. It is a good PC port, aside from the fact that there are no dedicated multiplayer servers. So you might want to give it a shot. Honestly, there is a demo available, so maybe that'll give you an impression. The campaign's about eight hours long. There is some longevity there in the multiplayer as well. I just don't know if it's really worth the price. It's not the best discount in the world, and every now and again you'll see this game actually go on sale in physical stores for cheaper than this. So perhaps it might be worth skipping. Brink, 75% off. That's five dollars at five euros, three pounds seventy-four, or five Aussie dollars forty-nine. I still stand behind my initial first impression of this game, which is that it is a fantastic multiplayer game. It has some problems, but honestly, pretty much every multiplayer game does in one way or the other. I mean, for God's sake, I could spend a lot of time talking about the problems of the currently popular multiplayer shooters. This is very much in the style of Wolfenstein Enemy Territory and Enemy Territory Quake Wars. It's by the same guy, Splash Damage. I enjoyed Brink a ton on the PC. I think the only problem I really have, in fact, there are two problems. One is that some of the maps have a tendency to turn into fights over choke points, which aren't particularly tactical. And the other problem is that the guns are a little bit weak. 
Actually, no, there's a third problem as well. In my opinion, the operative class is far less useful than the others. But for that price, I would absolutely give it a try. There is still an active community for this game. It is still a lot of fun to play, at least for a while. So uh, please do try Brink and go watch my WTF is on it. Perhaps you will get an impression of what it's all about. I think in terms of objective-based FPS fun, it's been one of the best FPS this year. Unfortunately, it didn't do very well, and it was very much a love-it-or-hate-it kind of game that a lot of people didn't like. I am not one of those people. I think it's great. Alien Breed, 75% off. So you can get the entire trilogy for $5.74, 5 euros 24, £4.24, or 5 Aussie dollars 74 this is kind of an avoid for me, honestly. It's a very, very generic third-person shooter, isometric kind of style. Of course, it's trying to remake the original Alien Breed games. It does not capture the nostalgia, in my opinion, and it is far too repetitive. There is really not an awful lot going on in this, and over the course of three games, they barely evolved it, so I'm not impressed by that. The other games that are similar to this, which I feel are better, Alien Swarm, which is actually free. You can get that off Steam from Valve just for free and it's a great game or of course the shadow grounds games those are really good they're by frozen bite the guys who brought you trine i would recommend having a look at those as well alien breed in my opinion is an avoid on that basis all right folks that's me done for the sale box today thank you very much for watching hopefully this has been helpful to you Please bear in mind that we're getting very, very close to Christmas now, so we are not on regular schedule and expect that to resume once Christmas is actually done. So if you're expecting things like Mailbox on a regular basis, a lot of other videos, that probably isn't going to happen simply because, well, it's Christmas, it's the holidays. We're not supposed to really be working now. And I also have a few other things that need to be done as well as spend time with the family, of course. So thank you very much once again, and I will see you next time.